Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of Kelly's Tech Time. Today, we're discussing what I consider to be the highest quality stream settings for a Twitch affiliate using one PC for streaming. Now, I know a lot of you have seen my streams before, and in fact, several of you have messaged me on Twitter saying, Kelly, how does your stream look so crisp and clear? Well, today, I'm gonna show you how to do the same thing, because knowledge is power. So, whether you're using Streamlabs OBS or OBS or Street, any of those things, they should have about the same settings. So, go to your settings. First thing you want to do uh, for output, you have to have an RTX graphics card to do this. So, just FYI, if you don't have an RTX graphics card, my method will not work for you. So, please keep that in mind. You're going to want to set this to constant bitrate. That's super important for streaming services. If you click this, it will automatically do that for you. 6,000 bit rates as high as you could do for Twitch. E frame interval of 2, preset for max quality. That gives you a double pass on your final encoding. Super important to have that if you want it to look that way. Next things you want to have I used to have Look Ahead turned on, and a recent update. It seems like Streamlabs has disabled this. I can't get it turned on no matter what settings I have. But if you have high movement, uh, you know, I do 60 FPS. I, you do usually have a lot of movement in my games. You don't really want the, the B area V frames to be four. It's going to lower your quality. So cycle visual tuning, set your main, your RTX GPU to whichever one that is, and set your B frames to two. This should work great. Next thing you want to go to do is go to video. Now, obviously I'm recording this at 1080p for you guys, but you need to set your bandwidth to 860, your output resolution to 864p. Now, why is that? Well, let's look at some math. I like math. Here we go. Thanks, Chow Bryant, for putting together this live streaming calculator. Feel free to go look up their website if you'd like to do this on your own, and don't trust my numbers. So most people are like, 1080, 60, let's go, let's stream it. Well, 0.1 bits per pixel, which is kind of the the goal that streamers want to get to, well, it's going to take 12,537 bit rate. You can't do that on Twitch. YouTube, you can. The YouTube's encoder is not not as good. I, I did stream on YouTube for probably half of my time streaming in 2020, uh, and I used a 12,537 bit rate, but my streams did not look as good as they look on Twitch. Now, Twitch just has better ingest servers. So, well, if we're not doing 1920 by 1080, well, what about 720p? Everyone uses 720p. Callie, just use 720p. Well, you could. But 720p is kind of grainy on our new devices. Like, this is being recorded on a 1440p monitor. And 720 doesn't look as crisp on that. Now, you have enough bitrate. In fact, you can get over 0.1 bits per pixel. You can get over that, so... No, whoa, whoa, wow. I mean, you could get almost 0.11 bits per pixel, but that 720 is really going to hold you back. So, my recommendation is 864p. Now, 864 is a multiple of 8, which is also good because MP4s look best when they are recorded at multiples of 8 for pixels. Now, you will notice that 864 is an option within Streamlabs OBS. It is an option, it's already on the drop-down because it's an ideal streaming uh, for MP4. So, you look here that you need 8058. Well, obviously we don't have that many. If you're a partner, all partners should be streaming at this. They would look great. But as an affiliate, I mean, you're, you're going to get reduced. It, it's lower. Um, 0 0.08. I think it's close to 0 0.08. Let's try 0 0.075. Yeah, it's about 0 0.075 bits per pixel. But I, mean, I did lots of side-by-side -side tests before I settled on this. 0 0.075 bits per pixel of 864p has better clarity for text, has reduced artifacting as compared to 1080p60. It looks very good on Twitch. 
looks very good. Go look at any of my past live streams. They look fantastic. Now you'll say, well, I've seen lots of streamers using 900p, so I'm just gonna use 900p. Okay. That's, that's great. Well, 900p is not a multiple of 8. And it takes even more bitrate. So I think this is, uh, like, 0.67 last I did the math. The so 0.068. Yeah, so it's point oh. Yeah, so it's it's gonna have less bits per pixel. Um it's more grainy in my opinion. Um you're gonna get more artifacting because you have less bits per pixel, especially on high motion content. So I highly recommend setting to H sixty four P. Obviously use this. It's your best judgment. For me, I'm sticking with this. It looks great. So, let's keep on keeping on. I set the process priority to above normal. Uh, I want to make sure that Streamlabs doesn't get ducked by the OS. Uh, MV12709 partial. So, this is something I didn't consider as important, really, at first. Um, but I messed with a lot of different settings with my Elgato HD60S+. Plus. I changed settings to then it, and it went back to here, and went back and forth, and back and forth. Whatever your Elgato software is set at to run, it's going to override this. So just leave this at default. You want to make sure your color space is a 709. Now, this may seem stupid. Callie, why do you have a stream delay set up for zero seconds? Do this. Just right now, regardless of whatever quality you're using, regardless your bitrate, anything, set this to enable zero. It will prevent the auto delay that just happens on Twitch. Just do this. Just trust me. It also reduces CPU load. Because if you have a delay added, it increases the amount of CPU processing power needed to do so. And GPU, so it takes more power. This does not, but it fixes a problem. Just do this. Go do this. Next, automatically reconnect. I put a delay of zero. You can set the retries wherever you want. I put a hundred. But, uh, yep. So this is probably the greatest setting in all the things we're going to be discussing. Dynamically change bitrate when dropping frames while streaming. So let's say you have a consistent 6,000 bitrate upload on your stream. No problem. It's ultra great. It's super consistent. But then you get some blips where it drops down to like half that. We're going to drop frames. And people are going to get buffering. If you do this... It will lower the quality of your stream just slightly. It'll just lower it down and it will slowly ramp it back up as you get your internet up and you will drop no frames. Your viewers will not see any frame drops. It's a great setting. It's not taxing on your computer. Just do this. Just check it. No matter what you're doing, check this right now. Also, since I'm streaming at 6,000 bitrate and I'm doing pretty high quality video, I've noticed that this also improved settings, but low latency actually hurt the quality. You already have a three second latency if you use low latency mode on Twitch. You don't need this. You don't. Can't even read chat that fast, so. And that is, that is it. That's, that's, that's literally it, guys. If you set your computer like this, if, if, however, this is important. This is something a lot of people don't think about is while you're streaming, you need to make sure you have open your task manager. So, I know a lot of people will go back and forth on Linksys versus Bicubic. I spent hours looking at comparison images from one to the other, one to the other, one to the other. I just do Linksys, it's fine. With the high quality content that we have nowadays, it's so minimal. It's so minimal of a difference. So I'll, I'll just stick with Linksys for all of mine. If you prefer Bicubic and you don't want the extra blending from Linksos used by Cubic, I'm fine with this. But if you set your stream up like this and you have a computer, like my laptop, you can look at my channel, the laptop I'm using to stream with, it's fine. It could do this, it could take all this, it could run my VTuber model, everything just fine on its own. So thank you guys for watching. I hope this was useful to you. I truly, truly hope it was useful. Um, if it is useful and you want 
to see other videos like this. I'm going to do stuff on stream decks, um, how to set up all the different meme things that I have, all of that. If you are interested in that, please leave a comment down below of what stream tech items you would like to see, and then we'll make more of them. Because I want you guys to learn from the things that took me a lot of headaches to figure out over the last year. That way you can have a better streaming experience and your viewers can have better quality for what they see. So thanks, this has been Callie at twitch.tv slash Callie Chronicles, and I stream every day. Stop by, I'd love to see you in chat. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.